Today on Locked On Canadians, Alex Newhook has finally signed a contract. Denis Gurionov is gone. Was that even worth it? And Dominic Ducharme, is he coming back to the NHL to haunt Cole Caulfield? All that's coming up on today's episode. You are Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 885. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. My name is Laura Sab, also known as the Active Stick, and I'm joined, as always, by Scott Matlove, Habs Eyes of the Prize. And to pull a peek behind the curtain, immediately after this, we are recording our goalie special episode. So you want to make sure you tune in tomorrow for sure. Scott, how excited are you that there's news today and that we are going to be finally discussing goalies, at least for a preliminary goalie episode. And I'm sure the listeners will want more after that. The the funny part is that we had planned to do this goalie episode and it finally kind of came to fruition a little bit. And then immediately Kent Hughes is like, by the way here's some news today. So we're like, well, we don't want to delay the news and everything happening here a day because y'all deserve the most up-to-date things happening with the Montreal Canadiens organization here. So we are recording two episodes today. So if by the end of the goalie episodes, our voices sound a little scratchy, it's because we are recording these back-to-back inside about an hour and a half time period. But I am always grateful for Canadians news. Always, always grateful for Canadians news. Uh, especially this because it we're not doing the long dragged out thing we did with Kirby Doc last summer and dragged out being a thing like it wasn't actually going to happen, but it's done. It's over with. The Canadians are down to like a handful of like minor league and young RFAs and their off seasons pretty well wrapped up at that point. Once again, I'm on mute. <laughs> I keep muting myself just because I don't know what the noise situation is. This house is pretty old and it settles and there's always people and whatever. Anyway, so I'm just going to say real quick, $2.9 million, four years. I think the term is fantastic. I don't know about the dollar amount because it could end up being a complete steal or it could end up being an albatross and an overpay what are your thoughts on this like there's so many question marks right now i i think that when elliot friedman announced that the canadians were closing in on a uh, contract extension for alex newhook uh 2.9 million dollars four years the first the top two comments said wow that's a great deal for the canadians and lmao overpay the duality of man is undefeated and i think it's great i think 2.9 million dollars is great because here's the thing is, is that if he hits and grows like Kirby Doc did in Montreal. $2.9 million for someone who's going to be a potential top six staple, middle six staple at worst, is pretty good money. And remember, the cap is going up a lot next year. That $2.9 million is a drop in the bucket. And it's very easy to swallow that pill if he doesn't work out in the way it is. And four years gives you a little bit of term to see where you're at. And I think it was... Uh, at Habs links on Twitter pointed out that it staggers when a bunch of contracts are due, big contracts are going to be due. Guys like Uri Slavkovsky, uh, uh, Alex Newhook, Kirby Doc, etc. They're going to be staggered so each player can get paid as the cap continues to increase here and you're not worrying as much about it. I think it's a great value contract. If he hits what his ceiling can be, you are hooting and or hollering. Uh, Why not this. both? Why not both on this? I am pressing both buttons on that soda machine right now. (laughs) And if he doesn't hit, it's $2.9 million with the cap potentially jumping several million dollars in the coming year. And at the same time, when the Canadians are going to be shedding contracts like Mike Hoffman, like Christian Dvorak, like David Savard, they're going to stop paying Carl Alsner. They will not have any retained salary left on Joel Edmondson. 
they're going to have cap space to play around with at that time. And they can continue to insulate these players with uh, either stars from free agency or uh, players who have grown here. I think it's great value. And we don't know quite where Alex Newhook's going to fit in. We kind of predicted what we thought in the last episode, but at $2.9 million for four years, I I'm kind of giddy. I thought maybe they'd go two to three years and do the Kirby doc situation. Getting four is great. And it leaves the Canadians in a, uh, I don't want to say a slim, uh, they have a little bit of a cap overage, but not enough that it is unmanageable. They can move some bodies around and make this work. And then they have carry price for LTIR, of course, to make this work. I do think Ken Hughes has more cooking, but as of right now, I think this is a great contract for the Montreal Canadiens and another really good bit of negotiating by Kent Hughes on a deal for a, I'm not going to say highly sought after, because I don't think that's the right term, but a crucial RFA for the Canadians. Right. And that's, that's really the thing is when you said highly sought after to me, I'm looking at this contract and I'm trying to gauge from it what the front office thinks of Alex Newhook's potential. And they clearly think that this is, this is a bridge deal. This is his opportunity to either be a, a depth player or really solidify his position in the top six. I kind of sense the, that they want him to play with Kirby Doc. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because of the acquisition at the draft or whatever, or if it's one of those, like, they look at both of them as other team reclam- reclamation projects where, you know, Montreal can be their change of scenery. Well, I don't, I'm not sure entirely what it is about that whole thing that makes me feel like this is uh, what they think of him, like they want him to play with Kirby Doc. But also, I would like to see as well how he looks in at center because then the Canadians are able to play around like Owen Beck will make the NHL at some point in the coming years. They have a log jam at center. They'll have trade pieces or though they might just leave him at the wing. I don't know. Um, I'm very curious about this. And one of the things is that I think a lot of people just think that he's not that good, but I personally question, you know, what line mates he played with in Colorado and he played on an extremely stacked team where he didn't necessarily have the opportunity to grab uh, a position for himself uh, that was a little bit more centered. Whereas in Montreal, the talents right now is set up such that he will have the opportunity. He'll be able to, if there's a spot that he can aspire to and his potential truly is there, he'll be able to grab it. Like there'll be opportunities for him to grab it. And I think the thing here too is that Alex Newhook mentioned getting to work with Martin St. Louis to unlock some of that potential. And I, uh, I forget who I was talking to. It was one of my uh, coworkers at SB Nation or former SB Nation, I should say no longer that in that Kent Hughes, we're not sure what to make of him fully as a GM, but he's going out and getting players that fit what the coach wants to do in that modern style. They are not trying to square peg round hole this. They are trying to make a fit here, and I think Alex Newhook is one of those guys that fits what Martin St. Louis is going to do here. They still lack a true high-end like superstar. Maybe it's Nick Suzuki. Maybe it's Cole Caulfield with a full healthy season, but they're adding so many of these guys that want to buy into this system and want to do so much for Martin St. Louis. They grew up watching him play that that matters, and he knows you know what it's like going to be like to play in Montreal. He's you know from. Uh, he's a noof. And so he knows what, what the Montreal market is like here. I, I'm very excited to see what he does now. I do think that a top six role the center, I think he's going to play with Kirby doc. I don't know. And before we've kind of bring this segment to an end here, a lot of people asked doc got more money and was in a similar situation despite having less points in production. The thing is Kirby doc was a third overall pick and the Canadians traded a top 10 pick top 12 pick, sorry, to get him into the fold in this organization here. They paid a higher price to bring Kirby Doc in, who was a higher pick than this. That's the big difference here. There's no reason to really split hairs or find anything in it. It's just a difference of price paid for this prospect. The Canadians gave up a much higher pick for Kirby Doc. He was a higher pick, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm excited. I'm very, I'm, th- I can't wait to see what they do with new hook here and what moves are going to come along the roster here because they got moves to make. 
And some of them are getting made for them, whether they wanted to or not uh, at this stage of the off season. Including the Canadians uh, opted not to qualify Denis Gurionov, um, who has now signed with another team. So we're going to talk about that uh, in just one moment here on Locked On Canadians. But first, this episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. What are Bird Dogs? They are the most comfortable shorts you've ever worn. They are stretch cocky shorts that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and the leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. They look good. They fit amazing. They are basically your everyday shorts. They're stylish. You can wear them to go out. Or you can wear them uh, to do gardening. In fact, I gave mine to my brother-in-law and a couple weeks ago, he helped me move. So for 12 hours, he was wearing the bird dog shorts. That's how comfortable they are. And you would want to get a pair of bird dogs for yourself. So what you can, what you can do is go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL or enter promo code locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NHL or use the promo code locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about asset management as well. The Canadians, um, I think at the time when they traded Evgeny Dodonov to the Dallas Stars um, and they got Gryanov back, he was a not an afterthought, but he was somebody who had disappointed. Uh, he had shown promise earlier, and then for whatever reason, he was extremely inconsistent to the point where some of the fan base was calling him lazy, checked out, uh, not living up to his potential. Maybe the potential wasn't even there. And he played in Montreal for a very short amount of time, and he showed flashes of being a really good player. But at the end of the day, he didn't show enough, and I think he wasn't consistent at all that the Canadians opted not to qualify him, thereby giving up his rights. And now he's signed with the Predators for, I believe, 850000 salary. I look at this and I go, I'm not heartbroken. The Canadians don't have a ton of space on the roster. They, Unless they were getting rid of the Hoffmans and the Armias of the world, Denis Gurionov was a luxury on a team that really can't afford luxuries at this point. I think there is skill there. There's a lot of speed and pace, a very good shot. And the Canadians, that would be great. A uh, a less physical Josh Anderson, basically, is what he looked like. But he's a bonus here. And I think it was $900,000, something like that. It's not a lot of money. So the Canadians could have afforded that very easily. I just look at this where they go, it wasn't a fit. And with going out and acquiring new hook, bringing back Monaghan, Harvey Pinard having that very big second half of the season. Guys like Jesse alone and taking that next step and all these prospects coming in, the Joshua was the Riley kidneys, uh, the Sean Farrell's even, etc. cetera. Gurionov is a luxury. They can't really afford in terms of player development because Dennis Gurionov is not going to change into a new player here. He is what he is. He's potentially a 20 goal guy in the NHL of all things come together skates like the wind, Maybe not the most overly physical, not the most creative guy, but the, there is some skill to it. And it's he went to Nashville, who is, I don't even know if it's rebuilding, retooling what they're doing with everything that they're doing right now. It, it's just the Canadians, it didn't fit what they were looking for. And maybe they circled back on it and maybe they both went, well, you know, we'll be in touch. If you get something else, we're not going to you know, stop you. We don't want you to hold you up on this. It's it was fun. I can't wait for the footage of him like being unstoppable for like a month and then disappearing for most of the rest of the season. It, it's it is what it is. It's like they got something at the end of the Shea Weber trade of things, basically, which is impressive when you consider Shea Weber was never going to play hockey again, and then they trade him, got Evgeny Dodonov, who was fine. And then went to Dallas and was great, which is somewhat annoying. And they got Dennis Gurionov out of it. Like, I, th- there's no use crying over milk that hasn't even been spilled because it's not that important. It's not that deep, as we say on the show all the time. I, 
it is what it is. It's annoying. I would have liked to have seen if he could have come back, but there's just not lineup space for him. They don't right. have room for it. And where was he going to fit in in the future? You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, like if you look at the longer term, where was this guy going to fit on a team that is hoping uh, to return to contending status at some point in their future, hopefully in the nearer future. Uh, but that was the thing is that, you know, essentially what they did was that they get got rid of salary that like, Overall, they got rid of Shea Weber's cap hit, his salary, his whatever, and then they got rid of Dodonov's salary, uh, albeit for a shorter period of time. Like they had taken him on um, from Vegas as a favor, essentially. It's just like essentially what they did with with Guryanov was like complete paperwork. That's the way that I look at it: is that they just completed steps for necessary paperwork to be done. That's all I'm going to look at this as. Yeah, and like. Again, like it's what's what's what are we upset about here? It's not like Shea Weber is tearing it up in Arizona now, I believe. Like it, it's not like Evgeny Dodon, I, I was playing he's in well Arizona enough in now. We did get called on that. <laughs> yeah, which I forgot. Like, excuse me. I'm sorry that Arizona is just a money laundering fl- front for retired NHLers and guys who can't play anymore. But I like I I don't feel the need to like really be too annoyed by anything on this. It in a perfect world, if this lineup was built in a better way and some of the dead wood was cut off of this, maybe there is room for Dennis Gurionov in here. And you can leave your why, your kidney, etc. to cook in the AHL for a little bit this year. But the fact of the matter is the Canadians didn't have the space. And there's no point in furthering the bloat on the roster here. And I'm not saying that Gurionov would have been a, a bloated piece, so to speak, here. But as I said earlier, it's a luxury they just didn't really need at this point. And and now that I've said that, of course, when they play Nashville, he's absolutely going to light it up against the Canadians because that's how these things go all the time. But the, they had the cap space. They had the room for it. They needed wingers to you know play in Nashville. And Denis Gurionov fit the bill cheaply so. And Barry Trotz mentioned swinging at guys like this. What are you going to do? It's not the end of the world. They've got RFAs. They've got young guys that can fill in this lineup. It's not like we're going to need Denis Gurionov is the make or break between making the playoffs or not for the Canadians. He is what he is. He's a middle six NHLer who occasionally gets really hot. Good luck in Nashville. Uh, it was a fun couple of months there. That's pretty much all I have to say about this is that I think people are just kind of you know, at a stage right now, it's the off season and they just want to get annoyed at everything the Habs do. And so it's like, oh, what a great trade, blah, 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 sarcastically. It's like, well, they got rid of, you know, they basically dumped salary twice is essentially what happened. Three times if you count Goriano of salary. Um, that's all That's all it is. It's, again, like Scott said, and as the mantra of this podcast, it is not that deep. Uh, I was just looking, uh, scrolling through, and we still do not have news as to where... But there are rumors flying around that Dominique Ducharme is going to be back in the NHL um, in an assistant uh, coaching capacity. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about that in one moment. But first, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets, up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, whether you win or you lose. That's 200 that you can spend on betting on everything from the money line to the over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run all on an app that's safe, secure and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. And us. So I have to admit that uh, it really came out of left field when you sent me this uh, so Habs links, which... Uh, which is an account on Twitter that, or and now threads uh, that aggregates essentially basically uh, all the Habs content or news that goes around, said that per TVA Spa, uh, Dominique Ducharme is apparently going to be returning to the NHL uh, to the Western Conference in an assistant coaching capacity. So I just checked, uh, like in our previous segment, I went through and I couldn't find any later news than that. Uh, so we still don't know where it is. 
But I mean, that was a very short turnaround time for somebody who honestly really did not do well with one of the young talents or the Canadians premier young talents. The wild part to me is that I am starting to wonder if they got this report wrong because not long after this report published, the Anaheim Ducks hired a new assistant coach coming out of the AHL. Um, They hired Thompson coming from the Islanders organization, which was met with cheers from Islanders fans, in case you want to know how that went. Uh, So hopefully our friends over at Lockdown Ducks can, you know, fill in more on that or Gil over at Lockdown Islanders. will have plenty of information, I'm sure, on that, having seen more of him than either of us will have. I... I'm of two minds on this in that one, I am not surprised that Ducharme is returning to the NHL. All coaches tend to get a second or third or fourth or fifth chance, depending on who you are. And I'm not surprised though, that it is an assistant coaching role as a head coach. He felt very out of his depth. Uh, And I know playoff run and all that other stuff, but I think a lot of that is at this point we've chalked up to, Edmondson and Price and Weber, et cetera, going in the room, basically like, we're going to do this, uh, whether you like it or not, Corey Perry being the vocal veterans there. And I don't want to say they were ignoring Ducharme, but I think that in that playoff run, it was, we're going to play on instincts alone here and do what we can. And then when it came time for him to actually coach without those voices in the room anymore, everything fell down like a house of cards. I don't think he was a bad assistant coach, but I also think I don't really know what he was as an assistant coach here because he replaced, I believe it was Claude Julian uh, when Julian was fired going into the 2021 season there when they were struggling. Uh, I think having Luke Richardson on the bench helped there a little bit. I think Richardson's doing a pretty good job doing what he can with what he has in Chicago this year. He's a well-respected coach that I think a lot of the guys listen to. And then Alex Burrows played with a bunch of these guys here. Ducharme was kind of the odd man out. I'm curious to see where he lands. I think I saw some of the rumblings that it was going to be Vegas, which you just won a Stanley Cup. Why are you changing anything at all here unless someone else is moving on to different roles? But I got to say, good luck to whatever team is doing this. He's in an assistant role, so whatever damage he can potentially unfurl on your team will be kind of held in check by other coaches. But... Man, based on how bad that season went for the Canadians and how just different the vibes were once Martin St. Louis came in, I'm surprised that he is actually getting offered another job at this point. Like, actually, truly shocked right now. I think one of the things that we do kind of forget, though, is that he was a highly regarded assistant coach prior to taking the head coaching position. And a lot of people just thought maybe he just wasn't ready for that responsibility, right? Like, we, you know it was years when Claude Julian was, was the head coach of the Montreal Canadiens. There were years where people were like, Oh, Ducharme is the next one. He's the anointed one. He's supposed to be like a, a wonderkind or whatever. Um, so I think that there was a lot of hype surrounding it and, and whatever new ideas or the way that he coaches and things like that, that caught people's eye at the time. I think that that's what kind of this is based on is perhaps like he wasn't just, he just wasn't ready for that big stage. That might have just been one of the, you know, like a, a, a huge factor in all of this was simply let's give him another chance because that might just not have been it might have been too rushed for him. Like he was given he was given an opportunity with a team that admittedly you can't even make one wrong move with, you know, a market like Montreal. And the thing is, is that I'm not against giving a coach who might have had a bad run a second chance. Like the Canadians are the kings of this currently. They've re- brought back both Michel Therrien and Claude Julien on multiple accounts. We were waiting for them to hire Elaine Vigneault after, you know, Dominique Ducharme got put on the hot sheet, hot seat, not hot sheet the first time. Or hell, what's Jacques Martin up to at this point? Like, I'm not against it. It's just that I think with how bad that season went and the really just raw, nasty taste that left in your mouth with how he got fired and then Cole Caulfield immediately took off under Martin St. Louis. And it just felt entirely different where the coach didn't have any answers. His answers were a guy on the fourth line, go to the AHL. We're doing this. Nothing worked. There wasn't any semblance to a plan. 
for Martin St. Louis, I get it. He is not perfect. I'm not going to say that he is a perfect coach because he is far from it. There are no perfect coaches in any sport at this point. I just think that there's at least some semblance of what he wants. Whereas with Dominique Ducharme, it's, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't see it, you know? And I think that is a, a fundamental difference as an assistant coach. I think he's going to be in a much better spot to do some good for this team, but you know, Habs fans, once they find out what part of this team he coaches, they're going to hone into it like a Hawk at this point. Right. Um, and in the meantime, what you want to be honing, honed into like a hawk is our next episode. We have got a goalie-centered episode. We're going to talk about Jacob Fowler. We're going to talk about the Habs goalie situation. That is all coming up tomorrow. In the meantime, we've got tons of stuff like that planned over the coming weeks. So please make sure you are subscribed to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. You will find us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. You will find each of us on Twitter. Scott is at Scott Metla. I am at The Active Stick. And on threads, I am at The Active Stick. And Scott is at Call Me Scort, S C O R T. Um, and we'll be looking at getting the Locked On Canadians A Threads account very soon as well. You can also email us at lockedoncanadians at gmail.com and leave mailback comments in the YouTube comments for us. Uh, just make sure you write mailback questions so it's not. Uh, confused with just a general comment and you want us to bring it up on our Friday mailbag. Uh, so thank you so much for listening and we will be back tomorrow with our goalie special.